Oh. <coughs> oh god. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Gabes to here. This is the normal quick raid guide for Paragons of the Klaxi, the 13th boss in Siege of Orgrimmar. Feel free to click on the annotation to check out the full raid guide or any of the role specific guides for tips for players of that role in particular. So the main gimmick for this fight is that you're fighting nine Paragon or Klaxi in total, but the order that they spawn in is random, and it's randomly created for the raid week for all raid groups. So you can technically find out which order you're going to get by looking at a, a raid that's already occurred for someone else before the week. But other than that, it's just randomly decided. So it's difficult to make specific uh, order or kill order assignments because it's got this random element to it. Now, another thing that's important to note is when you kill a Paragon or Klaxi, its corpse becomes interactable. And by right-clicking on its corpse, uh, you gain a buff corresponding with the Klaxi that was killed. So generally speaking, they, these buffs kind of correlate to various roles in the fight, uh, DPS, tank, healing, all that stuff. So it's important to figure out ahead of time which Klaxi buff you're assigned to. There are obviously going to be eight in total um, because the last guy is going to be killed before it matters. Um, but for the most part, if your Klaxi dies, you click on his corpse right away, and then you'll get an extra action button usually that allows you to do something better, uh, you know, so you can do more damage or more healing, whatever it might be. So tanking assignments and getting the right Klaxi as a tank is important on this fight. Uh, you can see in the chart here, there of the nine Klaxi, six of them require a tank. The other three simply uh, will just stand there and do their thing. And of those six that require a tank, four of them have uh, what I call an op opposing Klaxi. Basically this means a partnership or symbiosis that causes the attacks of one of those Klaxi to cause a stacking debuff that increases damage taken for that tank when taking damage from the other Klaxi. So in the chart there, you can see Dissector, recall the Dissector, his opposition is Bloodseeker. So when a tank for Dissector gets stacked with that debuff, if they tank Bloodseeker later in the fight, Bloodseeker will do a lot more damage to them and vice versa. So for the most part, the rule is a tank that's tanking one member of an opposing pair can never tank the member, the opposite member of that pair because the debuff lasts for the entire duration of the fight. So at some point, if they do that, they'll gain uh, stacks and take extra damage. So as quickly as I can, I'm going to try to go through the Klaxi and briefly talk about the things to be aware of for those uh, guys in particular. I'm not going to list the Paragon powers. Um, or talk about all their abilities, just the important stuff. If you want all the details, you can check out the full raid guide. So first we have Kilruk, the Wind Reaver. Uh, the main thing to watch for for him is a Reave, where he spins around in place and draws players toward him. He'll also try to gouge the tank, so make sure you watch for those abilities. Zarl the Poison Mind is another important one for tanking. Uh, your tank should try to use active mitigation abilities at all times when he's casting Caustic Blood. If the tank reaches 10 stacks of this, they will do an explosion that, that pretty much one-shots the raid. He also uses Catalyst, which basically causes a lot of potential raid damage um, depending on the Catalyst you get. So when you get those, just watch for the ability to go off and use personal or raid cooldowns. Uh, next we have Kaztik the Manipulator. His main gimmick is activating the uh, Kunchong bugs around the room. You can ignore these except when a bug uh, targets a random player. This will create a yellow beam between the Hungry Kuchong and the player. When that occurs, all DPS should switch to the bug and kill it immediately. Corvin the Prime is pretty dangerous for tanks. When he uses his uh, Shield Bash and Vicious Assault combo, the tank in front, as well as any other players in a cone, will take heavy damage over 6 seconds. So use a cooldown for that. He also uses Encase and Amber. This causes a Klaxi that reaches 50% health to potentially heal themselves to full after 10 seconds. When the Amber goes off, 
it creates a shell that is attackable. So all DPS should immediately switch to it. Usually it has about seven or eight million health and you can kill it off quickly. But if you don't kill it in 10 seconds, it will heal the Klaxi back to full health. And you can use this ability every 30 seconds. So it's up to your raid to decide how you want to handle that. But most groups will want to simply kill the shell within that 10 second period. And then you can kill off the Klaxi that you're going for. We have Iokuk the Lucid. His main ability is Fiery Edge from Calculation. This will create fire beams that link players together. And those players need to move apart from one another. The further apart you are, the less damage you will take. Anyone else not involved should simply avoid standing in the beams, and this will avoid extra damage on them. Uh, he also uses Diminish, which will kill a player outright if they're below 25% health. So be careful of that. Make sure your healers keep players topped off when he's active. Karaz the Locust will use a Flash ability, which charges players and does a spinning whirling attack, which stuns them and does pretty heavy damage to them. Uh, so that's the main thing to watch for on him. Skier the Bloodseeker is another important guy. He will use Bloodletting, which spawns two um, blood adds around random locations around the room. And if these reach melee range of a Paragon, they will heal that Paragon. So you can stun these uh, blood, but ultimately your DPS should switch to them and kill them immediately when they're active. Recall the Dissector is the most important boss in terms of tanking properly. His injection ability is ignored if you have an active mitigation ability as a tank going at the time. However, we noticed this was somewhat buggy and didn't always uh, ignore its application, even if an active mitigation was going. So just be aware of that. But when this injection expires, it will spawn Amber Parasites for every stack of injection. These Parasites need to be killed immediately. They will heal after every 10 seconds, uh, like clockwork, and they will fixate and feed on random players. So killing parasites is paramount. His sec, the Swarm Keeper, is the final guy. He's a hunter. He'll just stand there and shoot at people. The main ability to watch for is aim. When he aims at a random player, that player is stunned, and there's a beam connecting the player and his sec. After five seconds, uh, a shot will fire at the player, and it will do massive damage to them. However, any player standing within the straight line beam that was created will split the damage among themselves. So the best thing to do is to line up in sort of a conga line uh, along that, that beam so that you're splitting that damage and not really getting hit, hurt for very much. So uh, that covers the basics of their abilities. This fight is very complicated in terms of total abilities that can be used, but the main thing is to focus your DPS on the single Paragon that matters. Uh, cleave damage is irrelevant because they always heal the full after you kill one. And other than that, um, prioritize the, the Paragon that you're killing. If tanks are, are managing their tanking properly, and your DPS are killing the adds first and foremost, and then handling the other minor mechanics while DPSing the Paragon, you should get through it uh, without too much trouble. So that is the quick raid guide for the normal Paragons of Klaxi. As always, good luck and thanks for watching.